<laughs> All right, hi guys. Um, I was gonna type out my response, <clears throat> but then I found this, and this is way funner. So I'm gonna do it like this. Uh, so I kind of split up the phages responses into three, I think, because I know we need to do three responses on Ning. Anyway, so I only went up to about page 20. <clears throat> to start, I want to say I was a little intimidated because I always feel like anything philosophical, it helps to be a stoner to understand it. Um, but I'm not a stoner, and I totally got it, and I'm not saying you if you do get it, you're a stoner. But anyways, whatever. I just thought I would add that in. Um, uh, I want to start with questions I have in case people get bored and want to stop watching this, and then get into what I thought about the reading and then some random funny things I found in there that other people might have enjoyed. Um, first of all, on page four I have a question. Um, he talks about practicing the speech and sort of forcing people to listen. I, I didn't get that. Um, it's Socrates says it. Um, it's basically the whole paragraph on page four. Sorry if you don't have the Penguin Classic this one. Uh, that's the one I'm going off of. Anyways, uh, he says, I'll swear by the dog it's true, knowing the speech quite off by heart unless it was rather long line. Um, going outside the wall to practice and then they... I, I don't know. If someone can understand that, please explain. Um, and then on page six he starts talking about a fairy tale. It's right before they find the tree that they sit under. Um, Talking about Boreas and Pharmacia and Neropagus and having, he doesn't have time for leisure or he doesn't, there's no way I have leisure for it all. I didn't really understand that. Um, not capable of knowing myself, he says. So if someone could explain that part, it'd be super helpful. And then lastly, on page seven, I'm totally lost. I can't even try to understand it. It's right when Phaedrus starts talking about uh, his speech and talking about, uh, I ask for because I happen not to be in love with you. Um, again, those who are in love consider the damage they did to their own interests because of their love and the services they have performed, blah, blah, blah. If anyone can interpret that, that'd be super helpful. Um, all right, so things that I actually did understand on page eight. Um, well, first, I felt like Phaedrus kind of talks about relationships, um, not of platonic love, of actual love. I don't know what the word is for that. Uh, Phaedrus talks about love at a relationship level, and then Socrates talks about it from more of a friendship level. And um, on page eight, he says, those not in love, um, not in love, are in control of themselves, and basically they make smarter decisions. I thought that was kind of funny. Kind of the whole love is blind concept. Um, says, <clears throat> I happen not to be in love with you. This is the first paragraph of seven um, of Phaedrus' speech. Uh, oh shoot! Sorry, page eight. Page eight. Sorry. Um, uh, okay, bottom of page eight. Whereas those not in love, because they are in control of themselves, will choose what is best rather than have people think highly of them. Um, basically, saying that love affects your attitude and your mannerisms and it's so true even this book was this even though this book was probably written a million years ago it, it still applies today um also on page nine he goes into the whole love versus lust thing and i don't really understand what this has to do with english studies but uh he kind of presents the fact that in the long run you know marriage and things like that you can't base your relationship on lust. You have to have um, honesty. And uh, on 9 he says, Moreover, many of those in love desire a person's body before they know his ways and before they have experience of the other aspects belonging to him, so that it is unclear to them if they will still want to be friends with him when they cease to desire him. So, uh, basically... The whole, I mean, once the honeymoon season is gone, is the love still going to be there? And I, I don't know. I thought that was, I don't know, kind of beautiful, if that's appropriate for an English studies class. Um, I feel like I'm in a 
American novel analysis class or something like that. But anyways, um, and then uh, I want to see if I had any other notes on there. Um, oh, okay, so going back to the whole love is blind thing, he talks about how it kind of makes you pathetic in a way and insecure on the top of page 9. Uh, he talks about, <laughs> and everything they think, as in the, the lovers, um, they think is done in order to inflict injury on them. And then he goes on to say, and they are on their guard against the power of anyone who possesses any other sort of advantage. So I just think um, many of us can relate to this in our own lives or seeing our friends go through uh, <laughs> stupid stuff like that in their relationships. Anyways, uh, I could go on and on, but I'm going to move on to this when Socrates starts his his um, kind of parallel of that speech or rebuttal against it, his version. I don't know. Anyways, um, on page 10, he says, his, like I said before, his is kind of more of uh, the friendship aspect of love. And he says, um... Yet yeah, perhaps the fitting thing is rather to grant favors not to those who stand in great need of them, but to those who are most able to pay a favor back. Not to those who are merely in love with you, but to those who deserve the thing you have to give. Not to the sort who will take advantage of your youthful beauty, but to the ones who will share their own advantages with you when you become older. And this kind of parallels back to what Phaedrus was saying on um, the idea of people not using you once you're kind of beauty runs out, people who won't take advantage of you, and what true love actually is uh, in both aspects of friendship and in an uh, actual relationship. Uh, <clears throat> let's see. Oh, okay, then uh, real quick on page 19, he continues with this whole idea of everlasting love. Um, Uh, kind of in the middle of the page, when he sees a face that is old and past its prime along with everything else which follows on that, which it is no pleasure even to hear talked about, let alone continually compelled actually to deal with, when he is guarded suspiciously all the time and in all of his relationships, and when he hears himself praised at the wrong times and too much. Um, I just thought that was interesting, kind of going back to what we just talked about, uh, about being around people that aren't going to take advantage of you and what you have to offer them and kind of making sure that they can offer you something as well. Um, and he talks about on 18, so that's pretty much all I have to say about um, what I thought of the reading thus far. Uh, on 18 he talks about the flatterer as a formidable beast and a source of great harm saying, you know, that's all dandy that they can uh, compliment you and say how great you are but if they're not giving you advice then it's worthless you know if they're not saying critiquing you ah, whatever epiphany um, like in creative writing classes if people are giving you feedback that's you know gonna help your writing then it's it's worthless I mean it makes you feel good but it's not gonna help you in the long run so that's all I'm gonna say about that um some of the funny things I noticed on um, uh, let's see, on page 7, he talks something about hanging a vegetable in front of someone to get them to do something. I just thought, uh, like, why, oh, you, like, why you would hang a vegetable? Like, why wouldn't you hang a donut? I don't know. Anyways, uh, on page 9, too, he talks about how your judgment is impaired when you're in love and the whole aspect of desire, and I just thought back to how maybe when you're drunk and you think you're in love and your judgment is impaired and it's just not good for anybody. Um, so with that said, oh, okay, so uh, I tried to find things, this is my last point, I tried to find things that relate to the class. Um, on page four he kind of mentions having your speech be for the general good, talking about, I wish it would have been for the elder instead of the youth. I wish it would have been about um, the poor man instead of the rich man, just kind of about knowing your audience. That <clears throat> I thought that kind of related to our class. And then on page 13, 